So I just wanted to have a quick chat with you regarding obviously the, the training side of what you're going to be offering as part of the package we've put together. So our customers, obviously this is the, the, the bike we're talking about, which is the Nightster. When they come along to you, what can they expect? I mean, what sort of uh, stages are they going to be going through? So most people attend the motorcycle courses now will do a novice training package. <clears throat> so that will include a theory test prior to the course starting, which we can book for them and name for them. They just have to go along to the appointment. Right. Day one with us is a CBT. That's compulsory basic training. It's a DVSA laid down format. Uh, it takes about eight hours to complete. Oh, okay. Uh, it's in five elements. So the day starts off with advice on helmets and clothing. Uh, we move on from there, we take them to the machines. We talk them through the machine controls, how to do basic machine checks. So sort of things like checking tire pressures, how to check oil, and a few other checks on the machine. Mm -hmm. We then move on, we get them on the machines. We get them to practice moving off and stopping under control. And we move in through the program with slow riding skills. So we have slaloms, figure eights, U-turns. We get to do emergency stops, exercises. Right gear changing exercises, and then we have them cone set out for junctions, and we talk them throughout and negotiate junctions correctly on a motorcycle, through the correct procedures, and we get them to practice those as well. Right. The day is a training and assessment, so we will show people what they need to do. Uh, they obviously have to just demonstrate competence. Once we've done the on-site training element, which is element C, we then have a talk about weather conditions, road conditions, uh, making yourself more conspicuous to other road users, and how we'd adapt our ride to different circumstances and a chat about the highway code. Right. And then the final part of the day is a minimum, it's a legal requirement of at least two hours out on the road. Anybody who's sort of a little bit nervous about getting into this, basically what you're saying is before they're ever let loose on the road, you've taken them through exactly how to start the bike, stop the bike in an emergency, deal yeah. with junctions, everything. So yes. it's, it's really complicated. The on-site element will be about five hours. Right. Just as a rough guide. Um, at the end of the CBT day, Provided everything goes well, we'll give them a CBT certificate. Yep. And then they can move on through the rest of their course. Uh, so days two, three, and four are training. And at appropriate point, we'll assess their riding on a 125, which we provide, and then we'll upgrade them onto a 700cc machine. Okay. Because um, nowadays you have to have passed your test on a bike of greater than 595cc right. to get a full license. Okay. Okay. If you're doing it, that's for people who are 24 over. Yeah, yeah. Anybody under 24, um, from 19 to 23, can do what they call an A2 license. Yeah. Okay. So the A2 license is a restricted license, um, and then they can ride any size engine bike, but with a maximum of 47 brake horsepower. People on a DAS license who are 24 over can ride any size engine machine straight from pass and go. And that's the thing with this bike, isn't it? I believe this is a bike that can actually be restricted down to uh, that yes. A2 level, so that's yes. perfect. Yeah, so this can be used for either side. So they'll do the Module 1 test, which will be on day five. Yep. The Module 1 test is a slow riding skills test. So it's pretty much a lot of the stuff you went through on your CBT, yep. only on a bigger machine. And that's done by the DVSA, who then will issue a certificate on completion yep. for the Mod 1 uh, test. After the Mod 1 test, we have another training session and then we have the training session with the Module 2 test. The Module 2 test is around about 30 to 40 minutes. The examiner will take them out on the road, they'll give them some instruction initially on directions, then they'll give them what they call an independent ride. And the independent ride element is where they'll say, follow the signs to. Right. And for about five to 10 minutes, the examiner will just sit back and watch them riding and hope that they can read road signs and get the correct lanes and stuff like that for their riding, just general riding skills. Yes. He will then take over the directions again and bring them back towards the test centre. Um, on completion of the Module 2 test, then they'll be issued with a certificate as per the size of the bike or the power yep. output of the bike they'll depending be using on their the age. Test, depending on their age. Yep. Yes. Fantastic. It sounds incredibly comprehensive. So at the end of all that, it's pretty clear that you're going to have all the skills you need to, to, to go out safely on the road. Yes, that is the aim of why it changed. When you pass your bike test and I pass mine. Oh, back in the day. Yeah, you literally turned up, rolled around the block a couple of times yeah. and thank you very much if you stayed on the bike and off <laughs> you go. And if you lived long enough to learn your biking skills, then you became a decent biker. Obviously, again, in terms of what people should expect when they come along to the training, what sort of clothing would you expect them to wear? I mean, okay. obviously a helmet. But... Yeah, so it's a legal requirement that they wear a helmet. And that's yep. the only legal requirement of clothing that people have to wear. For training purposes, we've got corporate liability. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask them to at least wear gloves as well. Body-wise, motorcycle clothing is designed for the job of riding a motorcycle. Yeah. 
Um, it's tougher wearing than normal clothing. It's got stronger stitch than normal clothing, so it's designed for the purpose of riding a motorcycle. I mean, again, just you, you kind of covered it in terms of talking through the stages, but um, just to sort of reiterate, what is the sort of time scale from, from sort of basically taking on the package, booking the, the start of the course or start of the training? What sort of time scale are they looking at to actually get from CBT through to sort of Mod okay. 2 and ride away on their own bike? Okay, so we'll get the theory test before the course starts. CBT is day one. So we normally do something like CBT on a Saturday, training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday the following week. Thursday we'll be training with their module one test. And then the week later will be a further training session and then the training session with the module two. So normally right. over about two weeks. All right. Depending, that's very dependent on how we can get test slots from the DVSA. Sure. Yeah. But that's what we could do it in. We do advise separate mod one and mod two. Some people want to try and put them together. Yeah. If we can get the bookings, we can do that for them as well. The risk there is, though, if they don't get through the Module 1, they will not be allowed to do their Module 2 and they will lose the fees for it. Yeah, sure. And that's the DVSA rules. Right. So by having a little bit of space, it gives us a little bit of a buffer zone. But either way, it doesn't sound like it's, it's a particularly long-winded process. It can be done relatively quickly. It can be done relatively quickly. It's hard work. They have yep. to be able to work hard and have to be prepared to you know, work hard. It's not just a simple conversion course because they can drive a car. Right. It's quite an eye opener. A lot of people come back and say that their car driving has improved massively now they've learned to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, they actually learn to look a bit more and it makes see them more observant. Bit. Absolutely. It also makes them more aware of risk assessment. Yeah. So they identify risk earlier and hopefully that avoids them getting into situations and that, like I say, that transfers across into their car as well. Sure. Sure. I mean, just in terms of the bike itself, I mean, obviously, it's by Harley standards, it's a relatively lightweight bike, low seat yeah. height. Weight of the bike is around about 220 kilos, centre of gravity, nicely balanced. So you think this would be a bike that any sort of novice rider should be able to cope with quite well? Because, like you say, it's got a very low seat height, a very low centre of gravity, it's not going to be over heavy for people to manoeuvre around. Yeah, sure. That's been brilliant meeting you, and uh, I'm sure the, uh, the people that take the course on board are uh, going to love it.